You're back with another one. This time we got top 10 antagonist groups in anime. By Vinny 2, you know, Vinny 2, they good. Oh, why is it lagging? Why is it lagging? Yeah, they good. Make sure y'all like their video, sub to their channel, like this video, sub to this channel too. And we getting into it. I still got my my drink from the last last video. Well, the I gotta take them. Point of every anime. I gotta take them uh them water shots from our from our drinking game from the last last video. If you haven't seen it, uh you, you might wanna you might not wanna drink with alcohol, because yeah, you'd get fucked up real quick. And the most loved character in the show is the protagonist. The antagonists are those that often make or break the story. In order for us to get involved with the story, there needs to be a challenge and a threat. And usually these challenges come in the form of antagonist groups. Sometimes these groups come... I can already see. Word of the, word of the video, gonna be antagonist, right? So if, you, uh, if you're trying to participate in this, this drinking game, I'm gonna go grab a quick new bottle. New bottle of water, we gon' we gon' you know take a sip every time. Every time he say antagonist, or every time I say it. I'm probably not gonna say it as much. You can choose any drink you want. Drink responsibly if you're if you are choosing alcohol, or I'm not, because you know, one, I don't have any actually here now that I'm thinking about it. I think I have some wine, but it's it's not, you know, nothing crazy. Um Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that water. And we we gonna start it. It's gonna be real quick. Like two seconds. <sighs> see, it's just it's that simple. It's that simple. Let's see how uh how many comment down how many uh shots you put down, <laughs> shots or or sips or whatever drink of choice that you uh that you you taken at the end of this go in one arc and sometimes they're a looming threat like a storm in a distance that we know the main character is going to have to face one day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Watch Mo uh, I, I mean Vinny Tube. Here's the list of the top antagonist groups in anime. I was about to say they do like the same videos or something like would people talk about that? Big Mom Pirates, I guess. They was Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Starting off the list at number 10 from One Piece, it's the Big Mom Pirates. This group's one of the four pirate crews that rule the open waters of the New World. Founded and led by the Yonko, Charlotte Lin Lin, aka Big Mom, Big Mom Pirate uses Whole Cake Island as their base of operations. Almost all of Big Mom's pirates are Big Mom's sons and daughters. Considering how many children she has, we're not really sure whether Big Mom's fat or she's just continuously pregnant. She has 85 children who she uses as pawns, often engaging in political marriages for growing her power and achieving her goal of becoming the Pirate King. Big Mom Pirate acts less like a pirate crew and more like a small country with ministers and mayors. Yeah. Some of the strongest Big Mom Pirates are the Sweet Commander's Cracker, Smoothie, Katakuri, Daifuku, Oven, and many other notable fighters, tacticians, and crews. Oh, that's Daifuku. Okay. Uh, imagine, imagine being one of the strongest crews all the way up until, you know, you get to the strongest sea. You're like, oh yeah, we, you know, we holding our own. We're here for a couple of, like for a while. We're doing our thing. And then you run into a, a crew that just destroys you guys. Like, it's not even fair. Like, you have no shot. You're over here thinking like, what the hell could we have done different? We would, like, we're, we're up here. We're strong. Like, we're strong as hell. People, people fear us, and then you run into Big Mom's crew, and you're just like, "Oh yeah, we we ain't shit to them." All right, like, what are you gonna do about that? I'm I'm going I'm be disheartened. I'm be honest with you. I'm going back to the other seas. I'm getting out of out of the new world. I'm going I'm going home, straight up. I'm going home. I'm a, I'm gonna stick around my my little East Blue, West Blue, whatever blue that I got. That I'm from. I'm gonna stick there, cause I'm not trying to die out here in the. Uh, fighting the big mom pirates because they want some damn can candy or she want a pie and i can't give her a pie so she's gonna be like all right you're dying like no i'm not doing that my crew's not dying because of that we stay well you know i'm not trying to be pirate king we staying safe next on the list at nine it's aogiri from tokyo ghoul aogiri is a terrorist organization founded by eto yoshimura it's believed to be governed by the mysterious one-eyed king, a figure surrounded by speculation unseen and unknown to most, except for a few of the Aogiri members. 
Eto often acts behind the scenes, but Tatara, a direct subordinate of the king, has served as the operational leader. How does Algiri Tree? I mean, it's a very small detail, it don't matter, but you know, it's Algiri Tree, I thought, you know, that was their official name, because that's how they, they kept saying the tree part, like, may, like every time. I was like, oh, okay, I guess, you know, it's important, <laughs> the, the tree, you know. The Algiri are united with the goal of making ghouls the dominant species. Eto has stated that the organization has thousands of ghouls in their ranks, the majority being B-rated or below. The upper chain of command consists of many S-rank ghouls or higher, like Misa, Ayato, Tatara, and Naki. At some point, in Tokyo Ghoul, I didn't even know what, like, strength, you know, like, what, like how to quantify strength in that show. It's just people just kept getting stronger. At number eight, we have Kieitai from Gintama. The Kieitai was primarily made of young men who wanted to participate in the war. After the samurai lost the war, many of the Kieitai members were captured and executed in a post-war purge by the Bakufu. This was done in an attempt to eliminate threats and secure their rule, but in doing so, they motivated the Kieitai to become more extreme and dedicated to their cause of overthrowing Bakufu. The leader and founder of Kieitai is Takasugi Shinsuke, a wanted fugitive, rebel, and fierce samurai. His fight against Gintoki is surely one of the best fights you'll see in shonen anime. I'm mad to still hear her too. The fuck you screaming for? You were right next to me. gonna take the arm just like that and he's not gonna flinch too he's like mm, that hurt his little brother a badass on to number seven is the ten commandments from the seven deadly sins it's interesting how in this show the good guys are the seven deadly sins and the bad guys are the ten holy commandments this group is an elite of group the of the ten <laughs> strongest warriors amongst the demon clan. Handpicked by the demon king himself, he created the Ten Commandments to help him rule over the demon realm. He split his power to share with his subjects, making sure his position isn't in jeopardy by giving all of the power to a single individual, but instead dividing it amongst ten fragments. Each member possesses a unique power gifted to them by the Demon King called a Commandment, which casts a curse on someone that breaks the rule of their commandment, such as Galan's Truth ability, which turns anyone who lies into stone. Which is kind of crazy, how they could literally just leave whenever they wanted. Like, those two were just like, yeah, we're not part of the commandments anymore. And then they, they could just do it. Their commandment didn't, like, there was no backfire. Their commandment was like, if you leave the commandment, you turn, you know, your commandment gets turned against you. Like they could have, you know, but like, no, nah, it was just like, I don't want to be commandment anymore. And then they left. They're like, you know what? We were brought back. We were turned into commandments and y'all could take over where we were at. So we not, you know, we not your enemy anymore. It's like, what? You could just do that? You give bad guys that kind of option? I mean, that's trust right there, but. That's why you don't trust you don't trust villains. Cause they gonna turn on your ass. Next on the list at number six is the League of Villains from My Hero Academia. Founded by All Might's arch nemesis All for One, the League of Villains is the largest criminal organization we know in the My Hero Academia world. Today it's led by Tomura Shigaraki and its goal is to top the hero society by destroying the symbol of peace, All Might. So While evil. Tomura acts as an impulsive child who wants to destroy for the sake of destroying, his right-hand man Kurogiri, who has a calm and rational demeanor, is a perfect counterbalance. A major asset to their power is the artificial Nomus that All For One has created and filled with quirks. Exactly how many Nomus they have isn't known, but the fact that a Nomu can stand their ground against the most powerful hero All Might is the hint of the power that the League of Villains have. I love how the punch just made his arm jiggle. He was just like, shock absorption. <laughs> At number five, we have Jupon Gatana from Ruroni Kenshin. 
Shishio was Straight a former assassin who served like the government, but after the that government per, attempted to assassinate to him, here. Shishio would go into hiding, slowly amassing power and forming his own revolutionary militia to topple the government. As the head of the militia, he assembled a group of elite warriors, the Jupungatana, translating into ten swords. The warriors in the ranks of this group are considered some of the most powerful warriors in all of Japan. Although their ranks are distorted and their fighting styles differ, they're all glued together with their resentment for the Meiji government and their admiration for Shishio. I'm thinking, does Bakugo have his own immunity to his, uh, his explosions? Because them explosions come very close, like on his, off his hands, boom. Like I, He should have an immunity, shouldn't he? Because if that's the case, just have him stand in a room with all for one. And just let loose. <laughs> just let loose. Go crazy. Just get that man out of here. No one going to just turn you back. Like, I ain't see nothing. That man just died in his cell. He got no family left. Who going, you know? He got no family. He got subjects. But, like, I know that's illegal as hell. But, like, honestly, at this point, like, it's, it's kind of better that, you know, he, people like him is gone off the streets. I don't know. I'm kind of messed up for saying that. I'm messed up for saying that. But, you know... true. He's a danger to all society, to everybody, even his own allies. Moving on to number four from Full Metal Alchemist, we have Homunculus. Homunculi in the FMA world are regarded as a sort of a myth. The concept is known to every alchemist, but no one's ever managed to come close to making one. There are seven homunculi, each named after the original sin, and somewhere on them within them exists a philosopher's stone that would allow them to transmute seemingly without obeying the basic law of alchemy to obtain something of equal value has to be given. Each of the homunculi are beings of unique immense power and each with a personality built around the sin they embody. Killing any of them is a very hard task that requires an insane amount of planning and skill because the only way to kill one of them is to drain the philosopher's stone within them of all of its power. So I love that show. That show is so good. And I have not been keeping in track of the uh, the amount of times he said antagonist. And I haven't been keeping track of the, the number. Because the Espada is, you know, that's, that's a good thing. But then also the homunculus. I will put them above the Espada. I put uh, League of Villains. They, they good where they at. Ten Commandments, they gotta go lower. I'm not gonna lie. They're not threats. They're not, they're really not threats to the, the, the sins. I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean they are, but like they really aren't. Because <laughs> like, what have they really done? I mean, the sins the sins should be stronger. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's why they're threats, but like the sins should honestly be stronger. I don't know. It's not even like they win, but it's it's by the skin of their teeth. But they, it's consistent, so it's like, are is it is it a skin of their teeth win? And then Algiri Tree, like they, I don't even, I, I, they, I don't even know. Like, who are they really a threat against? Was it our main cast, or are they just the threat against everybody? Because I, like, I, they, I guess that spot's right. Big man, big man, big mom pirates. You know they. I guess they they good back here. I'd probably put them above Algiri. I'd probably put them above the Sins. League of Villains, nah, nah, yeah, they they yeah, right right between the Sins and the League of Villains. Yeah, that's that's good for the big male powers to me. At number three, it's the Espada from Bleach. Now the Espada. The Espada consists of the top-ranking Arancars that rule all other Arancars. Arancars are a type it. of hollow that gains strength similar to that of a Shinigami by removing their masks some removing the mask by themselves, and some through Aizen's experimentation. The Espadas are equal in power with that of the captains of the Gote 13. All Espadas are ranked according to their power. There's a tattoo on each of their bodies representing their rank among the Espadas. For many, the introduction of Espadas and the subsequent arc was one of the highlights of the Bleach series and one of the best Ooh, arcs next I to the Soul him. Society I was glad one, when he got mostly shredded. thanks to the charisma of the Hated Espadas him. themselves and the epic battles they had with the captains and Ichigo. Bro, I'm about Since to just rewatch this arc because I did enjoy I'll just the mention that my favorite Their Espadas are good. fourth Espada Ulkiora and second Espada Grimjow, and judging by the amount of cosplay I've seen of just these two, I'm guessing I'm not the only one. Wait, four and two? 
is it like power was descaling or es escalating? Because wasn't because there was that one dude who who when he got mad didn't he go to zero? And like he was the strongest Espada. Thought I thought Ukiora was was stronger than Green Jow. Ooh, Yakatsuki. Yeah. Okay, that's good order right there. Yeah. Because Espada definitely definitely was actually a threat. Now I'm thinking about it. They're a threat. At number two, it's a cat's. Now, now, can you tell me that this man can't wash every one of these motherfuckers right here? He can't wash every one of them in a one one v one. He getting washed. He getting washed. He getting washed. She getting washed. I mean, okay, maybe maybe not. He'd probably not washing. Kamui is broken as hell. I'm not gonna lie. He's not washing Obito, but he mm, he not getting washed because he got Susano. But like, I'm still I'm still I'm still coming out with with pain. You know. He getting washed. Honestly, he's he's strong as hell, but he's not he's not touching pain. He's not you know he's not touch especially if he got all the paths. It's over. It's over for him. It's over for him. Kakazu, like bro, you not touching you not touching pain. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. The pa especially with the paths, bro. Especially with the paths. Paths paths of pain stomp out Kakazu. Like literally, they'll have him on the floor stomping the shit out of him after destroying three of his hearts. And they'd be like, fight back, motherfucker, fight back. Punching the, you know. Itachi might have the best chance out of all the Akatsuki minus, you know, minus Obito. Because he, I don't even think, you know, I don't even really count Obito as a Akatsuki member. Because that, you know, if you know, you know. And then Hidon, Hidon's just, you know, honestly, honestly, honestly. Hidon is the weakest member of the Akatsuki. Honestly, because even, because. She, what's her name? Conan can take him out. Datara can take him out. Blow him the fuck up. I don't know about Sasori because he's, you know, he actually might beat Sasori because he's he's immortal. Like, what's Poison going to do against you? I mean, he might, you know, he, he's going to beat your ass. He's going to beat his ass. But, it, you know, it's a fair fight. That might be, you know, that I want to see who, who will win between these two. That's going to be a fair fight. I still think, you know, he's going to win if he has the pay path to pain. And then he washes everybody. <laughs> I'm not, Kamui is just too broken. He washes everybody. From Naruto. Originally founded during the third Shinobi Wars by Yahiko, Nagato, and Conan, three orphans of the second Shinobi Wars. Knowing the pain the war brought them, they formed Akatsuki with the goal of bringing peace to their home country. The Akatsuki collected the tailed beasts as a path towards world peace by putting everyone in a dreamlike state of infinite Tsukuyomi. Akatsuki's members are all S-class ninjas. Some of the other notable members are Kisame, Dedera, Hidan, Sasuri, and Itachi Uchiha, who as a teenager slayed his entire Uchiha clan, which is an accomplishment, but I wouldn't put that on my resume. If I was a ninja, I would. I'd be like, shoo. Now, now, only reason I disagree with this, I love the Phantom Troop. They're entertaining as hell. They're um, they're a threat. You know, I love them, but they ain't really do anything. If they, you know, maybe if they have more screen time, or you know, they do like if they come back in the manga, and then they re they finish animating it, I'm cool with that. But like as of now, I don't think they should be this high. But I love them. Let me get let me not get this twisted. I love them. And finally, at number one, it's the Phantom Troop from Hunter Hunter. Founded in the Meteor the City, the junkyard of the world, the Phantom Troop are infamous in the world of Hunter Hunter for right their here. strength and ruthlessness. Yeah, four, the group is three, made of formidable five, Nen users. The leader of the Phantom Troop is Crollo Lucilfa. Considered by many as one of the strongest characters in Hunter Hunter, his intellect, fighting skill, and a complete lack of fear of death in combination with his unique overpowered ability that allows him to steal and use other Nen users' ability which he collects in his book make him incredibly strong. That is hella broken. We don't know how many he's stolen, but that book does seem pretty thick. Krolo, as well as other members, put the troop above themselves, with the obvious exception of Hisoka, who puts his fetish of young boys, I, I, mean, I mean fighting <laughs> strong foes, above everyone else. That shit was creepy the as hell. limits their love and affection to- And they felt that shit. They was like, no, oh, you gotta go in the front. You go into the front, you ain't looking at us. Uh-uh, get your ass in the front. In the group, 
The rest of the world sees another side of them, the no, cold-blooded criminal side that have a complete disregard for life and morals. Among their crimes, the one we know most intimately is the massacre of Kurupika's clan, the Kota clan, for the sake of the dark market value of their scarlet eyes. And if someone wants to join the Phantom Troop, I'm the procedure hard to pronounce is that. very simple. Just I'm kill one of the existing own. members. So which are your favorite antagonist groups? Let's talk about it down in the comment section below. He said it. Go ahead and take your, your last shot. If you've been keeping track, because I have not been keeping track, I'm going to be honest. Shot or sip, I don't know. Whichever one you chose. That was a good list. I would have reordered it. But like, I agree with everybody on the list being on the list. I just, I, I don't agree with the order. Straight up. Kassir, the coolest design of all villain groups. That's true. The fact that they all like different, but the same, like dress the same is cool as hell. I mean, that normally wouldn't be cool, but like the Akoski is cool. I don't know why. Cause they got that era of like, don't mess with them. Hey, there's that, there's that debate right there. Yeah, no, that debate was, yeah, no, I'm, that was dumb. That was a bad debate right there. i be honest with you. That was a bad debate. It was only bad because, man, one of the one of the two, I guess, ramen pack was uh he he was over here saying like reaching, and then once those those were being debunked, he was like, it's not relevant. Let's move on. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I hope y'all like the uh like the video, subscribe. Like like you should you know, you should subscribe. Most of y'all not subscribing. Y'all y'all consistent. Y'all consistent watching. You just don't subscribe. Like you might as well just hit that subscribe button. Make it easier for you to see the video. You know, because you might find some sleepers. You might find some sleeper videos. You you want to see those, right? Go ahead, subscribe. All right, I'm out. Peace.